What is going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and this is a very interesting uh, topic to discuss. Uh, and I thought I'm gonna make a video about it. Uh, so TLS certificate pinning or SSL pinning is not something we we hear about every uh, every time, especially in the back end. This is purely, to be honest. It's a front-end kind of engineering, especially in mobile development or, or application development that is local. And it is to increase the security. So let's say if you're building a web application or a mobile application, and you know that you're always connecting to always one server. Let's say you're building a game. This is your server, g.com, right? This is your this is your server it's not gonna change so what you do is essentially is you burn that knowledge in the client application in the mobile application game or in the anything that you develop that this is the client you're connecting to and since you're establishing a tls connection right you also pin is that how you do a pin you pin that certificate into your burn it into the code itself so that we always know that we're connecting to the server it has pros and cons but let's discuss it what it is what does it mean why do we need it and uh how about we jump into it all right so guys how does certificate works in general right so if i am a client here and i want to establish a tls connection between the server and the client we do a handshake, right? And in this handshake, we exchange the pub, uh, the public key of the server. The server sends the certificates, right? And it, the certificate has some information and signed by a certificate authority, which is in turn signed by something called the root certificate, which is in turn self-signed, right? This is the chain of trust, it's called, right? So the certificate g.com here is sent, right? And the client, the first thing it takes is say, okay, let me take the, the, the TLS client code takes care of the validation. And now I'm talking about just vanilla stuff, right? So if I receive the TLS connection, open SSL here or any TLS library that you end up using in your Android development or iOS is going to do the validation for you. It's going to take a look at this. It says, okay, this is encrypted or this is signed. Uh, this is signed by this certificate authority. But uh, do I trust the certificate authority? Who signed this? Oh, it's signed by this root certificate, which guess what? It is always self-signed. So how do I know who signed this? You don't. The root certificate are installed, pre-installed in the device. So installed in the in your mobile device or anything, right? So root one, root two, root three, da 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 da. So a list of preloaded stuff for you, right? And they are trusted globally. Okay. So that's how certificate validation works. Okay. Problems with this. Problem with this is if I uh, in the middle here intercepted the communication and served you my website g shady.com I'm running out of names that is also it's my own website but it looks exactly like yours it it has the same APIs like yours because I stole your code I stole everything and this is signed by a certificate authority that is trusted. And it's signed also by a root certificate that you, root one, that is also trusted by you. Boom, just like that. Look at editing, the power of editing, huh? So yeah, this is the shady certificate and man in the middle happened. It could happen. It's, it, it is not as simple, but it happens, right? And we talked about Man in the Middle and how it happens. Check out these videos right here. So yeah, during Man in the Middle, and it can happen, right? DNS poisoning is one way. <laughs> DNS poisoning is the worst way, actually, where you can even you cannot even detect. But even just terminating the the traffic and serving you uh, serving the client, the attacker here, serving its own certificate. Now, if you 
come back the client side and you start validating your your code will validate this without any problem right because guess what the the communication you think you're going to g.com but you here served something completely different gs.com right or even g.com if it was dns poisoned right the dns was poisoned and this is just a, a domain validated certificate yeah this could be easily spoofed right not easily but it happened before right so now i received that and you trust all that stuff and you will be able to communicate with this the server with the attacker and the attacker will terminate the traffic look at your data and then to connect with your server so that's the problem we're trying to solve with what we call tls pinning so let's discuss tls pinning all right guys so we have here my g.com certificate on the server and it is signed by ca and it's signed by let's say root two right which is also trusted by me okay as a client certificate pinning is the idea of pinning this certificate hard coding it in the code itself g.com either by doing a hash or trusting this or trusting the public key or trusting the certificate itself right or trusting the root which is already what we're doing here right and uh, another thing i forgot to mention is the root certificate also can be can be faked right because especially an android device this is so easy someone can just inject a bad root root z right and and forces you to trust it so that's another way people can essentially just inject bad roots with self-signed certificate even right that uh, uh, that is just like uh, this is trusted trusted so it's a client trust this thing so yeah it's bad so we need certificate pinning especially when we're building a, a web a mobile application that we need to trust okay so now what we do is either we hash the certificate and store it locally in the application so that if i establish a communication between the server right and the client the server will send me g.com right but i'm not gonna and and, and the open ssl client locally will validate it and says okay but we don't rely only on that validation right because that's just one layer of validation that we get for free and and we prove that it might be not enough so we need another layer of validation which is the certificate pinning i pinned my certificate right here my pins are the worst right and i pin it in the code so now i write some code to check okay let me get the certificate at the application level and compare it to the ha hash it and compare it to the hash i have here of the certificate itself does it match sure thing it matches if it doesn't match we fail the connection when are the cases that this might not match if karen here came in and somehow impersonated g.com right or served me the same certificate uh, while my dns was uh, like let's say the certificate authority was po dns poisoned and then uh, uh, got its own certificate but now if i get this certificate instead i'm gonna come I'm going to come, first of all, the OpenSSL, the, the vanilla so TLS for certification validation will pass, obviously, right? That's okay. Then my code at runtime kicks in and says, oh, g.com, let me hash it to this. <clears throat> Fails. So you can easily detect man-in-the-middle attacks with certificate pinning. Another advantage is you don't really need a good certificate, right? You can you can use a self-signed certificate, right? That is not signed by anybody, right? And you hash it right here. Shouldn't be red, but you get the idea. <laughs> so you hash it right here in the code and you do it this way. So now if you establish a communication between the client and the server, the server will send you the self-signed certificate. Yeah the the open ssl will reject it but you can bypass that rejection if you want to by doing dash dash insecure 
right? And you do the validation at the client level, at the application level. And then you say, okay, I'm gonna hash it and then compare it to mine, perfect, okay? So you can do that as well, right? Not really recommended, but people do it. Some people do it in their application. So that's certificate pinning. What's the problem with this? Well, the moment you update the certificate, if it's, let's say, expired, then you have to recompile your code, which kind of sucks, huh, right? And if the certificate authority has been revoked, right, is not, no longer trusted, you are, in this case, still trusting it, which is kind of bad, right? So there are some limitations to this, but it's, a, it's still a good practice. I just learned about this like a few days ago. It's, it's, it's really fascinating what people are doing uh, at the application layer to, to, um, to kind of more, validate more their TLS communication and build better secure mobile application. Because, yeah, if I, if I, because I am as a, as a mobile application, if I'm building a game, I know I'm connecting to one server only. I am not going to connect to other servers. I don't really care. So that certificate pinning really makes sense in that case. But if you're building a browser, you cannot do certificate pinning at all. It doesn't make any sense, right? A browser have to be able to connect to any web server. If you're building curl, right? C-U-R-L, like the uh, Daniel Stumberg, you cannot do certificate pinning because you need to be able to connect to any server. Certificate pinning is only applicable two domains that you would like a set of domains like this is the only domains i need to communicate with and i cannot connect to anything else but yeah they are more secure obviously but if you change you have to change the code and redistribute this to all your client again i don't think it's a big deal but yeah that's just one limitation all right guys i'm gonna see you in the next one uh subscribe for more back-end engineering and security stuff goodbye stay awesome